Hey guys, Kenji from the Limited Resources Clan bringing you a, yet another uh, M12 Draft 8-4. This time we're going to try to force green because, you know, there are a lot of people in this, um, there are a lot of people that don't like mono green, or uh, not just mono green, but uh, green in general in this format. And I'm here to show you that the uh, the deck, or the green, the color, is actually quite good. Um, so here we got our pack, and we have a pretty nice open here. We opened a Cudgel Troll, one of the better cards in the green deck. Um, the only true thing that it dies to, if you don't have um, any any regeneration mana up, is I think Incinerate, unless they have like Triple Ring Flesh or something something crazy like that. Um, other than like O Ring, any direct damage is not going to kill it or destroy effects. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and pick up the Cudgel, Cudgel Troll here, and I actually think it's the best card in this pack, anyways. So that's a good start for us. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, green is just heavily underdrafted, and nobody likes it in this format, but I actually think it's quite good. Um, you end up getting a lot of uh, Garrick's Companions, the one green, or two green for a 3-2 for a, uh, Trample, and having those on turn two is just such a, such a beating. I mean, sure, there are a lot of, you know, two ones in the format, but they're, uh, they're going to be willing to trade almost every time, and if you have, like, a Titanic Growth or something, you're just going to get them pretty hard. Alrighty, here in this pack, we have some decent cards. I think the best card in this pack is the Bell Tower Sphinx, but I'm going to try to stick with the green and I'm going to take the Arachnus Web. This card is basically just a rest. Um, sure, if their creature, you know, is greater than 4 power, it does fall off at the end of the turn, but sometimes you just need it to, to stop a blocker for a turn, and that's fine. Um, otherwise, if it has 3 or less power, it's just an arrest, and it's uh, pretty good. I do want to pick up some Llanowar Elves, though, and some Sacred Wolves, but I think the Arrest, is, or I mean the Arachnus Web is going to be uh, a little bit better for us right now. So it looks like we have a pretty good start. We do want to pick up some uh, some Land of War Elves and some Garrick's Companions for sure, but you know, we're only on the third pick for the first pack, so we're not too worried. Alright, looking here at this pack, we do have a Land of War Elves, which is pretty sweet. Um, I think the best card in the pack is probably the Goblin Fire Slinger. A lot of people undervalue this card, but don't get... Er, uh, don't underestimate it. It's one of the you know one of the best one drops in the format. If you land this thing on turn one, it not only enables all of your bloodthirst unless they remove it, it also just gets them for like you know four or five turns uh, on average, I'd say. But yeah, we're just gonna take the uh, Land of War Elves here and keep cutting green as hard as we can. Try to be rewarded for it in the second and third packs. Um, I guess there was a Phantasmal Bear and a Devouring Swarm, both fine cards in their respective colors, but green. You know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of green in this format. Alrighty, here we have a fourth pick Pacifism. I think I'm actually going to take that over the Giant Spider. Um, the Giant Spider is obviously one of the best things you want um, in the green in the green deck. It stops, stops so many creatures, and there are a lot of flying creatures that, you know, you can have a hassle with, but I think the fourth pick Pacifism is, is, a, is a pretty big signal. Um, we just could end up splashing it, and I do want to take a giant or a couple giant spiders if I can, but the pacifism is just too hard to pass up right here. Alrighty, looking at this pack, uh, pretty weak overall. I think the best card is probably the frost breath. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna jump into blue. I don't think, um, and I'm definitely not gonna take the reclaim. Uh, that being said, the stone horde dignitary and the divine favor are not uh, really cards that I want to take. Um, after the Frost Breath, I think the Act of Treason, or maybe the Amphin Cutthroat are probably the best cards. Uh, I'm just going to take the Frost Breath, I guess. Uh, we're not really passing anything, any signals, especially any green, so that's good for us. And here we have... Um, I guess we have a, a moderate choice here. We could either take the Ponder, which is, you know, a very good card, or the Titanic Growth. Um, like I said, I don't want to be in blue, especially when not with green. I don't think it's a very good color combination. So I think I'm going to take the Titanic Growth here. It's a it's a really good combat trick, and uh, one of the only pump spells in the format. I'm going to go ahead and take that. Oh, okay. So, um, I, the Greater Basilisk is in the pack, but I'm going to take the Stormfront Pegasus here. I think, the, you know, the Stormfront Pegasus is one of the best two drops. Um, especially since, you know, it's a 2-1 flyer for two. Um, just, like, compare it to the Dusk Hunter Bat in black, and, you know, there's no comparison. Uh, the Dusk Hunter Bat has, like, a 
a clause that where you you know it has bloodthirst, so you need to get in damage. So I'm gonna take the Stormfront Pegasus here, but uh, I do want to pick up you know at least one Basilisk if I can later in the later in the draft. Alrighty, um, nothing much here for us. I'm just gonna take the Naturalize. It's a fine sideboard card, and if I don't have enough playables, I will run it main. There are a lot of uh, enchantments and auras in this in this format, and um, it's certainly nice to have one of these in your sideboard. I don't really like the Stonehorn Dignitary in the green green decks, especially if I'm playing white. Um, I think we're too aggressive, and we don't really want to be, you know, on the uh, slow controly type. Uh, nothing for us in the pack that wield. I guess I'll take it on summon. I'm not going to play the Guardian's Pledge, I don't think, and the Bountiful Harvest is just <laughs> terrible. Alright, um, so we could take the Rusted Sentinel, or we could take the Mighty Leap. The Mighty Leap is uh, one of the other pump effects, um, you know, that's not an aura. And uh, it's a fine card, but I think I'm just going to take the creature. Alright, now we get a chance at our Mighty Leap. That's unfortunate that we're passing an Act of Treason. This is a pretty good card against us, but uh, we'll take the Mighty Leap. And now we just got filler cards, nothing to worry about here. So the first pack went, you know, moderately well. We opened a Cudgel Troll, got past some moderate green cards. I think white is safe to say it's fairly open. We got a, what was it, a third or fourth pick Pacifism, and then uh, I think it was a sixth or seventh pick Stormfront Pegasus, so that was really good. Wow, that's our second second Quicksilver Army that we opened. Um, so this is a pretty strong pack, not necessarily for our colors, but pretty strong. There's the Merfolk Looter, very good card. Uh, Blood Ogre, very nice. Stormfront Pegasus, you know, good. Chasm Drake, very good. Plummet's fine as a sideboard card, sometimes even main. There are a lot of flyers in this format, so sometimes you don't, you know, you want to run well, at least one of these main. Hunter's Insight, I like this card a lot. If I can, uh, or I always want to fit one into my green decks if I can. The card advantage, you know, is uh, uh, pretty substantial. Um, here I think I'm going to take the Stormfront Pegasus. Um, and stay in green-white. I think the best card in the, in the pack is probably Merfolk Looter closely followed by Blood Ogre, uh, but I'm just going to take the Pegasus. And we have nothing really good here. Um, I think we're going to take the Swiftfoot Swift Foot Boots. Um, it's really nice having, you know, haste and hexproof on some of the fat green creatures in the format, and certainly on some of your flyers as well. Uh, we could take the Griffin Sentinel. Um, I don't like it too much in this type of deck, but it's fine. Um, because it's a 1-3 Flyer Vigilance, you know, it's just it's just going to keep on uh, hitting them for a few turns, and it holds off a lot of the uh, small creatures in the format. Another Fire Slinger as well, but, you know, nothing too great. We're just going to take the Swift Foot, Swift Foot Boots. Alrighty here, we got a, you know, decent pack. Um, Blood Ogre is still in the pack. This card is just stops so many creatures in the format. There's so many two toughness guys that are at com at the common slot, and you know the blood ogre just deals with all of them, even if he's unbloodlusted. Um, you could make a case, I think, for the carnage worm, but I'm going to go ahead and go with the Garrick's companion. I know we already have a few a few white drops uh, in the two slot, or actually, I guess all of our white drops are in the two slot. But uh, the Garrick's companion is really good for the mono green deck, and uh, while the carnage worm is good, um, seven mana is quite a bit. I mean. Even a six six for seven is fine, and a nine nine for seven with you know with trample is pretty good. But I'm just gonna take the Garrick's companion. Ooh, we have a saucy pack here. Oh uh, wow! So this pack still has the vamp vamp vampire outcasts, um, incinerate, child of night, chasm drake, fiery hellhound, and rampant growth and titanic growth. Uh. The best cards in the pack are probably the Vampire Outcasts and the Incinerate. Um, Chasm Drake's very good. Child Knight's obviously good. Um, so the, I guess the pick is between these two, but I hate seeing Vampire, vampire Outcasts. Uh, I think we might be able to splash the Incinerate, because we're probably going to get some Rampant Ghosts later on. So I think I'm going to take this Incinerate here and uh, pass the Outcasts and a few other good cards. That was a very strong pack. Ooh, and we got a we got a very nice one. If you can pick up a Dungrove Elder in a draft and you're drafting Heavy Green, this guy is the nuts. Um, 
yeah, there's not much to say here. If if you're running, you know, more forests than anything else, you're going to want to play this card. Uh, later in the game, he's going to be, you know, at least a 3-3 three, three or 4-4 four, four for four, or for 3, and he has Hexproof, so really nice card. It's unfortunate we're going to pass a companion in the pack as well, but you just can't pass a Dungrove Elder. Ooh, and we have another another good pack for us. We're going to snap take the Giant Spider. Um, the Stampeding Drino, you know, I wouldn't mind having one or two in the deck, but um, I think the, the Spider does a lot a lot better work for us here. Um, comes out a turn earlier and it takes care of so many flyers in the format. Uh, we do want to pick up a, at least one plummet later uh, if we can, but the Spider is just going to do a lot better work for us. And the next pack looks like it's loading. And this pack is pretty bad. Um, I guess we take the Benelish Veteran. We might as well play it. Um, Flash Reeve is probably going to be good against this. I guess you could technically take that if you want, if you were worried. But I'll just take Veteran since it's in our colors, and we'll probably end up playing it. Alrighty. So uh, we have a few options here. We have Trollhide, Stave Off, and Lure. I think the best card in the pack is for us is the Stave Off for sure. But I do like having at least one. Um, one in, one or two enchantments in our deck, and I think the lure is actually really fine. Um, you know, it's not that great, but uh, if you can land it on one of your hexproof guys, like if we've landed on our Dungrove or put on uh, one of the uh, Sacred Wolves, it's pretty good. I think I'm actually going to go with the uh, Stave Off, though. It just does so much work in this format. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take that, because I'm not worried about picking up another another troll hide, and I'm, if, if there's another uh, lure somewhere in the draft it's going to be passed because nobody wants to take it all right let's see look at our converted mana cost we don't have any five drops yet so i'm going to go ahead and take the greater basilisk uh... we already have a mighty mighty leap i haven't really played with this card that much but i don't think it's that good i mean i know i know that uh... if you leave four mana untapped and you have this out on the board they can't really attack profitably but uh... it just i don't think it's going to impress me very much Okay, and I took the Greater Blast this year. Um, so in this pack, nothing else. We're just going to take the Titanic Growth. Nothing, nothing. Ooh, wow, that's a late Chasm Drake. That's a, what, 12th pick. Hmm. We'll go ahead and take that. Interesting. Actually, <laughs> for our 14th pick, we actually got a, a fine sideboard card for us in the Autumn's Veil. <laughs> Go ahead and start hiding all the cards that we're probably not going to end up playing. Uh, probably not going to run the naturalized main. So looking at our creature count right now, we're kind of low. So we're going to want to pick up, um, you know, at least five more creatures because the green decks are uh, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty crazy. Um, in the creature count. And wow, we opened quite a pack. Jeez. Um, hmm. <laughs> Inferno Titan, Phantasmal Dragon, Sanger Vampire, Mind Control, <laughs> Incinerate, and uh, a bevy of two drops that are fine. Um, wow. With the Incinerate, I'm really tempted to take the Inferno Titan, but we already have a few good white cards that we do want to play. Uh, we're not going to take any of the uh, blue cards or the Sengar, obviously, but the Inferno Titan, I just don't think you can pass this card. I know it's pack three, but we already do have an Incinerate. I think I'm going to pick it up here. It might be a little bit greedy, but you know, that, that card is bonkers. Ooh, and we got a nice one. We got an Arachnus Spinner, spinner to go with one of our uh, Arachnus webs. <laughs> it's funny, there's an Arachnus web in the pack as well. So, the, yeah, I think the best card is obviously the spinner, and we're going to take it. But I think it's followed probably closely by the Stormblood Berserker and then the Arachnus Web. Yeah, so taking the spider is pretty nice. Uh, it's going to be really hard to splash the Titan. I think I think we might be forced to drop some of the white, maybe just splash the Pacifism. Um, in this pack here, we have the choice between, I guess, Shock, Giant Spider, and Garrick's Companion. I'm going to take the Shock here. It's removal. I know we're passing some of the better green creatures, but I think we want to just keep keep flowing in the red if we can. Alrighty, here we have Runeclaw Bear, Landlord Elves, and the Crown of Empires. 
The Crown of Empires is fine. It's a little bit slow, though. I think I'm going to take the Elf here. 